Okay, so in front of us we have an RTX 3080. This is the uh, Hollow Amp Black by Zotac. Like all the broken cards we get, we want to first start by checking for a short on the base voltage rails. So I have my multimeter in continuity mode. If I probe something connected to ground, like ground itself, my multimeter beeps. So we want to first start by checking the uh, base voltage rails and in particular for short. So we're going to check uh, 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So to check the 12 volts, just check any one of the uh, first three pins and we are perfectly good. And to check 3.3 volts, we start as notch and we go four pins left. Again, we're perfectly good. Now we wanna check 12 volts at the external A pins. We can get away with just checking this, uh, these two shunt resistors here. Checking the one on the left, perfectly good. And checking the one on the right, perfectly good. If you're wondering why there's a short beep, it's because the uh, capacitors on that power rail are charging up. Now we wanna to go to resistance mode and check the voltage rails generated by the card itself. To start with, we're gonna check um, five volts. I should note that the 30, this 3080 actually has three five volt rails, but this is the main one. And we have a uh, 1.8 kilo ohms, which is more or less what I typically see. So this is the uh, main five volt rail. Then we have uh, this one over here. This is another supporting five volt rail. If you're wondering why there are multiple, these cards that have lots and lots of power stages typically have multiple five volt rails. Anyways, since five volts is used for the VCC for um, the power stages themselves. So in this case we have 15 kilo ohms and rising, which is um, high enough. And then finally, we wanna check uh, this five volt LDO here so we can check the tab itself. So we have, uh, I can tell it's above 10 kilo ohms, which is fine. So anyways, now we wanna check 1.8 volts. We have 44 ohms, which is a kind of worrying sign. Typically speaking, a short on 1.8 volts is accompanied by a dead core, um, well over 95% of the time on Pascal and I would say on Turing as well. Now we want to check the uh, PEX rail. The PEX rail is typically about 5 ohms for 3080, around there. And in this case we have a uh, 4.3, which is, um, it's actually a bit low, but it's not so low that it's bad. So we'll say it's perfectly fine. And finally we want to check the memories. The memory is typically around 50 ohms for a 3080. And we have 47.8 ohms, which is high enough. Okay, so we have one major concern so far, and that's the fact that we have a short on a 1.8 volts. So that's actually not the only th um, hint of what's wrong. So for this particular card, um, knowing the history actually kind of gives us a clue, or I would say a very strong clue as to what's actually dead. So unfortunately for the owner of this card, they used it in a mining rig where they made the mistake of improperly inserting their uh, X1 mining riser into their system. So here's the uh, actual X1 portion. So this one's actually from the customer themselves, and if we look on the other side, you can kind of see the uh, burned ground pin on the uh, bottom right. So despite the uh, short on 1.8 volts, let's go ahead and power on the card and see what symptoms this thing has. I expect the card to have all voltages and not be detected, but who knows, we could be wrong. So well, let's go ahead and power it on. Okay, starting with uh, the main 5 volt rail, which we have, 1.8 volts, which we have, Going to the PEX, actually no, the next rail power on is actually the V-Core, or maybe it's the Encore, not, I uh, can never remember for these 30 series cards. 750, as expected, and checking the PEX, which turns on after the V-Core, which we also have, 950 as expected, and checking the memory, which also turns on after the V-Core. Again, 1.35, which is more or less expected. So, I should note that these uh, Ampere cards also have an Encore, as it's called. It's, um, I believe it's usually the lower inductors on the right, but let's go ahead and check any one of those random ones. So again, this is uh, typically about 750 as well. It's, it's kind of hard to distinguish um, between the Encore and the V-Core. So because we know that our damage is um, due to a um, improperly inserted mining riser, we can safely assume that whatever problem we have with the card, is likely uh, related to the PCIe pins themselves or these ones here. So again, this is um, there's a few power lines and the first data line. Again, on the back side, it's the same story. These are back pins here as well as the first couple pins. So for a card that has, let's say, an improperly inserted mining riser, the first thing that you should always do is to put your multimeter in diode mode. And in particular, you want to be checking four pins. So the first thing you want to check is the, uh, the first pair of um, PCIe lines. So this would be the third pin from the notch. So checking that pin with diode mode, we have 1.67. And checking the uh, second pin in the first pair of PCIe lanes, we have, uh, again, 1.67. And checking a random line, we have, again, 1.67, more or less. So those are perfectly fine. Now we want to check the uh, pins on the back. So for the back side, we want to be checking the reference clock plus and the reference clock minus. So the reference clock plus um, is the second pin going right from this notch. So checking that second pin, 
0.8, and checking the reference clock minus 0.8. I should note that the uh, values themselves, they don't really matter as long as it's not zero or open line. And in this case, because they're consistent, we can con assume that there's nothing wrong with the data lines themselves. So it seems like maybe this card is actually fixable, and um, but we'll have to check it. So at this point, um, we have more or less three hints as to what our component is dead on the board itself. So the first hint, of course, is that the owner told us that he inserted his uh, mining riser improperly. Now I should note that the word that he used is that he inserted it while it was on. He did not mention that he inserted it backwards, which is very important because if it was inserted backwards, I guarantee you the core itself would likely be dead. So by inserting it improperly, we can take a guess that what's happened is a bunch of voltages around the, uh, the PCIe pins left of the notch on both the front side and the back side have likely been mixed. So if we have a dead component, very likely it's connected to one of those pins. The second hint that we have is that our dead component is very likely connected to 1.8 volts. As you saw, we only have 50 ohms on the 1.8 volt rail where we expect to see, you know, something either in 200 for some RTX 30 series cards and or about a thousand plus um, for, I would say, most of the RTX 30 series cards that I get. Now, the third hint is actually the fact that this card um, has all voltages and almost normal resistances, minus 1.8 volts, but is not detected. If you take all three of those hints, there's actually a very natural guess as to which component is bad. And that natural guess is the logical AND gate connected to the PEX reset pin. So let's go ahead and actually measure the output of the logical AND gate connected to the PEX reset pin. Okay, powering on the card. And as you can see, we have 1.35 volt. Well, this is actually too low, believe it or not. This should be um, at least 1.8 volts in my experience. However, we can't just assume that the gate is dead even though we have strong reason to believe so. So these uh, AND gates, they have three key voltages that are supposed to be present in order for the um, gate to work properly. I'll explain what they are later. But for now, let's just check them so I can get on with the repair. So first we need to check VCC. This is a uh, 1.8 volts and possibly the source of our short on the 1.8 volt rail and we have 1.8 volts. Now we need to check uh, pin input one and input two. So these are also both required for the AND gate itself to output anything. Checking input one, that's uh, 3.4 volts as expected. Checking input two, again, 3.4 volts. Okay, at this point, we have a very strong suspicion that the gate itself is dead. So let's go ahead and replace it and see if the card becomes any more functional. Okay, so as you saw, I replaced the uh, logical AND gate for the PEX reset over here. And better yet, when we turn on the card, we now have a BIOS splash screen. There we go. Which means that the card is now in a bootable state and we should be good to stress test it. I also want to add that the resistance of the 1.8 volt rail rose to 1.2 kilo ohms, but unfortunately I forgot to record a clip of this. However, for this particular card, I'm actually going to change the uh, thermal pads given that they don't look so great. And um, this card is actually unfortunately out of warranty. And I should note that it was out of warranty before it was sent here. I don't, I don't repair um, in warranty cards. Okay, so you can see the uh, card runs just fine. You know, it's running game currently. So, um, so as a brief summary before we end the video, we had a problem with the uh, PEX reset AND gate. So if you don't know these AND gates, the way they work is that they require VCC, input one and input two, in order to output something on the um, output pin, which is pin four. However, um, in this case, we had uh, all input voltages. So we had 1.8 volts for VCC. We had a uh, 3.4 or so volts on input one. And um, I think again, 3.3 or so volts for input two. However, we only had an output voltage of 1.3 volts, which unfortunately was not high enough to cause the uh, GPU to get out of the reset state. So after we replaced the gate, the uh, card was working and the output voltage would have been um, at least 1.8 volts or higher. Um, unfortunately, I didn't check as from memory and I've already sent the card back. So it, was, it would have been at least 1.8 volts. And of course that was enough to get the uh, card out of the reset state and um, working. So if my channel or my videos have helped you out, consider becoming a patron or buying something through the Amazon affiliate program. You know, that would definitely help out. Otherwise, I hope you learned something watching this video and hopefully I will see you in the next one.